Hey, hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Sea Stories. Sea St- what are Sea Stories? Sea Stories are tall tale journey told among sailors. And I, with me, I got a couple of sailors to tell our own sea stories. As always, we like to talk, tell our sea stories over a couple of brews. And we do a little mini bu- beer review at the end. So uh, stick around and to hear our thoughts. Uh, my name is Adam. I'm a 10 year Navy veteran. And today I'm drinking a collab from Black Raven Brewery. Brewing out of, uh, I think, Woodenville, Washington, and they're collabing with Firestone Walker Brewery with their uh, Shark Ripper IPA, um, Citrus Notes. Uh, tasted it. Tastes fabulous. I can't wait to review it at the end. What's going on, Andy? How's it going? And uh, what do you got for us? Doing good, Adam. Good to be here, as always. Uh, you know, lovely day. I'm uh, on location for work down in Charleston, South Carolina, near uh, the Navy operations and all that. So uh, I'm sure I'll maybe see some future, you know, nuclear sailors or something, maybe if I'm lucky. <laughs> but anyways, uh, I am drinking the Sweetwater uh, Extra Pale 420 uh, beer for my uh, selection tonight. Drew, how are you? What you drinking? I'm good, Andy. I'm good. I... I'm going to be drinking Florida Avenue. It is a double dry hopped tropical hazy India pale ale. I am very excited for this beer. I haven't tried it yet, <clears throat> um, but it seems to be right up my alley. Uh, Joe, what's up, man? How you doing? What you drinking? Hello, hello. I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. Uh, Andy, thanks for joining us, even though you're on location in South Carolina. Carolina, man, thanks for taking the time out of your busy schedule to pop <laughs> on for us for a little bit, dude. Um, <clears throat> I'm drinking the uh, Martin City Hazy Way IPA, double dry hopped India Pale Ale. Uh, it's it, it, the, the cans aren't as cool as everyone else's, but it's it's still a pretty good beer. Uh, it's actually my second one, so uh, jazzed about talking about that, I guess. But it's uh, out of uh, Martin City, Missouri. And it is a pretty uh, small little brewery, but they've got some killer killer beers. Mr. Josh, how are you doing, brother? You looking good? I'm doing good. Uh, let's see. What am I drinking tonight? I am drinking, of course, an IPA. It's actually an Imperial IPA, and it's called the Evil Dankster. <laughs> so, <clears throat> and it's by the, I guess, Tub t- Tups. T U P P S Brewery? I don't know. Out of McKinney, Texas, which is up towards Dallas. So uh it's good. I've gotten it before. And it's uh really good. Nine percent ABV. Oof. I know. <clears throat> but they hide it well. It's not boozy at all, so it's kind of nice. Uh anyways. I'm not introducing oh yeah, I am introducing somebody, aren't I? Yeah. Our very special and handsome and unique. Oh, you read the you read the intro I, I sent you, I see. <laughs> <laughs> Guest. Why is that on your LinkedIn uh, profile? Right. <laughs> um, um uh, Ben Hall. Ben, how are you doing tonight? Oh. I am doing fine. I uh, was a little bit late here, but uh, I'm doing great. I'm in Seattle, and uh, I am drinking a, what's it called? Ride the Spiral double IPA with pineapple and orange. Ooh. And it is spectacular. I've had it before. It's very good. Uh, first, um how many uh, steps do you get in a day, bro? Because you are like on stop <laughs> walking right now. Are you getting to your house? Where are you climbing a building? What is happening? <laughs> I'm just, I'm at work. I'm just walking around, but um, I, my, uh, my doing a podcast and uh, steps to walk a day are inversely proportional. So uh, I am, uh, yeah, I'm pacing around because that's how I, my brain doesn't work if I don't. Okay, cool. I'm just wondering, man. I thought you were lost in the building. Yeah, that, where are the hole in the carpet around there? Dude, they're going to so you, you said, like, I'm in front of my building. I thought you were going home. 
And I'm like, he's never getting home. Like, there's something happening here. Like, <laughs> I'm concerned it, for Ben. Yeah. I'm worried. <laughs> I, Maybe dude, he's I almost called person. Seattle PD. Are you wondering? So they would never show up. <laughs> no, it's All right. right. <laughs> Just making sure you're okay. Yeah, I don't want to get anybody else sick. <laughs> awesome. Cool. Well, Ben, Ben Hall, we are super excited to have you on the podcast uh, this evening. Um, it has been, I feel like a long time coming. I think that you were, you know, part of our crew, part of like usually what we had done. Um, you know, I, I know personally me and you have always had a good time. I've, I've always been a fan of yours. Um, but yeah, absolutely. So let's kick it off, man. Okay. Um, where are you from? Mr. Ben Hall. Ah, so yeah, I, uh, just was, um, especially from Pennsylvania though, uh, I lived in like six states. My parents moved around a lot, not for, not for military, but uh, for college and stuff. They went late. So I was there for their college graduations and stuff. So uh, to basically Kentucky, um, uh, Missouri, uh, New Jersey, a bunch of places in um, Pennsylvania, but then settled in high school where I went to high school. I basically consider that where I'm from. So that was uh, Amish land in Pennsylvania near Reading, Pennsylvania. So, Okay. Yeah. Cool. Cool. So, what were uh, what was uh, old high school Ben Hall like? Tell me about him. Oof. I mean, were you were you like a part of the Amish like culture? Like, yeah. Is that like a part of what you had to deal with every day? And how did that like kind of affect? No. That? Yeah. That's a lot of questions. well, um, but it was on the the sort of uh, margins of uh, Amish uh, country where. You know, there was, uh, you know, I lived in a small town uh, about an hour away from Philadelphia. So, you know, I like to consider myself in a suburb. Uh, but in reality, it was pretty much in the middle of nowhere. Uh, we did get a Walmart in uh, one one year. And uh, I remember it was funny because what an interesting juxtaposition. There were cars and then horse and carriages tied up outside of the Walmart. And I was like, man, not many places you'll see this. Uh, but uh Pennsylvania um, high school was uh, 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 strange. Um, basically, like I graduated um, at the bottom of my class, well, fifth from the bottom of my class, and uh, so college was essentially not going to be an option for me in the immediate term. So uh, that's why I ended up actually joining the Navy. I remember a guy walking by. I wanted to fly airplanes. I thought that I always wanted to be a pilot, and so I, he was walking by. And I said, oh, are you in the Air Force? He's like, no, I'm in the Navy. What time do you have study hall? And then <laughs> I was like, well, night period, why? Uh, and then so he came by and then he pulled me in and he was very good. He was a very good salesman. In fact, you guys all know him, I think, as Arthur Dent. Um, he was on the boat. He, he ended up oh, coming, yeah, coming yeah. in. Yeah. Uh, yeah. OS. I think he was OS. Yeah, um, he was OS. Yeah. For him. yeah. Yeah, small, yeah, small super, super nice guy. Yeah, super nice guy. Um, so, uh, but you know, I think our views of our recruiters uh, changed a bit when we went in. I don't know, for me at least, changed a bit when I went into boot camp. Uh, like, you know, I was told they'd be serving me food. Like, you know, what is this? What, what do you mean push-ups? Not That's not what my recruiter one. told me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, that, that's yeah. interesting, you know, because I think that, you know, I, I think I speak for all of us. We've all seen you as a very intelligent person. You know, it's interesting. You were at the bottom of your class for high school. Yeah. Like, well, thanks. You know. I mean, yeah, I, it, uh, yeah, it, it was, um, and it wasn't, you know, like, uh, I don't know. It, this is something I'm still thinking about a lot. I don't quite understand what, what happened, but uh, it, it wasn't too easy for me. Like, that's what some of the parents deal with. Is that their kids are just bored because everything's too easy. It wasn't too easy. Uh, but I, what I would do is uh, spend a lot more time trying to cheat on homework than would actually take to do the homework. Uh, so maybe I contributed to it. I don't know. But but then there was the Navy with his warm embrace ready for me. We're like, <laughs> <laughs> we got a place for you. And it is always <laughs> cool. Yeah. So before you um, before you met, you know, your recruiter. Um, what were some of your like goals or, you know, what did you want to be basically after you were done with high school? Yeah. So um, I wanted to be a pilot. I thought that was really cool. Um, and uh, so my dad was a preacher. Uh, 
minister or whatever. But um, yeah, so he's very religious. Well, I, my whole family is very religious, obviously. Um, though I found myself drifting, drifting away a little bit from that. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, I, I said my dad would always say things like, oh, you're going to make a really great preacher. Uh, and I'm thinking, no, I'm not. Like, uh, <laughs> no, I like dinosaurs. Or I think they, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I believe in evolution. Uh, no, he wasn't fundamentalist. He's actually in a pretty uh, liberal, open-minded uh, sort of denomination, Methodist. But, um, but yeah, it is, you know, my mom played music. Uh, music was one of the best part of my relationship, I think, with my my mom. Um, we'd jam out. I played cello, where other guys played football. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, so I also I was a virgin all the way through high school. If I didn't have to. You know, it probably didn't need to be said, but uh, wasn't a jock. Um, played cello. The only we didn't even have an orchestra program in my high school, so I was the only person. Um, but uh, there was, yeah, um, there's something I would like to to to, um, to pull in uh, to this because it's relevant and it's navy. It it wasn't in the navy. Um, you know, like I didn't like I said, I found myself sort of moving away from religion. I I, I found myself defining myself as a uh, agnostic at some point and this is huge right i mean like i grew up this way at church every sunday you know it's just, it's i'm totally saturated and immersed in this thing um but uh but i remember like so when we went on the cruise i don't know if it was the actual deployment or it was the booze cruise but i was talking to a guy he was um he was a he was a polish was a polish last name starts with a p uh, he was, he worked up on the bridge uh, doing something. I forgot what it was, but, um, he and I, uh, you know, we were both off uh, one night in Norfolk and said, uh, Hey, you want to watch a, you want to see a movie or something? I didn't really know. I'm just the acquaintance, acquaintance, but I was like, yeah, let's go watch a movie. And so, um, watch the movie. I can't remember what it was, but I remember the conversation on the way back was, uh, was interesting. Um, he apparently was like very into architecture. He was like passionate about architecture. I didn't know anything about architecture. So I remember, and I still remember his descriptions of things, but like of art deco style, imperialistic style. And I think, man, this guy is like brilliant and passionate about, about architecture. And to me, he just looked like every other guy, right? Just the same uniform, um, you know, same guy. And I was thinking, man, like it's, you know, all of us are this guy, really. I mean, you know, he is such a, I got, we had a mutually beneficial experience. I got to learn about architecture and he had the sort of nice catharsis of being able to talk about it. Um, and it's nice to share your passion. So I was thinking, man, it's like, everyone's like this. I feel like I'm, you know, I am passionate about things that I'd love to, you know, talk, talk about. And so ended up, uh, deciding to start a ship newspaper. I don't know if you guys remember that at all. It's called Cruise News. Um, and uh, I remember Sternberg, like this is, um, uh, this is sorry about a little bit of a deviation here, but this is, uh, was like one of the most impactful things I think in my entire life was this, this experience. Um, and so I, I asked, I sort of probed or I put some feelers out there to see if anybody would uh, be interested in like, you know, contributing. Um, and, I don't know about you guys, but I don't like view military guys as like the type that like to write and to, you know, like, you know, express feelings and, you know, go into, that's why we joined the Navy. We don't want to freaking be academics. Right. But, we um, yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, that's, but that's not that sort of artistic expression, right. Uh, and communication. So, but what was interesting was that there was this really huge response to, you know, people contributing things. It was very disorganized at first. I mean, I had probably 40 or 50 people say that they would be interested in contributing something. And I remember even Chief Sternberg, if you guys remember that guy. Uh, yeah, he was a cool dude. But he, yeah. was, well, he was hard to gauge at first because he was like, he was a big, like, scary DC man. Yeah. <laughs> you know? he was like, I, mean, salty, you know, right? I do remember that guy. Yeah. Yeah. He worked down in the engine room, right? And his yeah. name said it all. Sternberg. You don't F around with Sternberg, right? I mean, yeah, yeah he would, uh, yeah, he'd tear you down pretty quick, but gruff guy, you know, one word answers, uh, doesn't F around, uh, you know, doesn't joke around, not that type of guy. But, um, when I, you know, put something out about this, uh, newspaper, shit, newspaper thing, like he like 
sent me a message or something saying like, I'd like to contribute. And I was thinking like that guy, like I did not <laughs> expect that. And, but what he wanted to contribute was like funny stories or something like that. And, uh, I, so he submitted some and like, I thought they were so articulate. They were so like skillfully funny. Um, like, like you really like a, like a writer for SNL or something. I mean, like he had such a good wit uh, that I never would have seen. I never, just, I never would have seen that at all. But that really made me, you know, sort of hammered home this concept of like, you can't judge a book by its cover where I had maybe prejudged. And I was probably guilty of doing that a lot, actually, um, growing up in a religious family and everything, uh, prejudgmental. But, um, that was really eye opening, uh, for me. And, um, his, his humor was, was great. It was, it was spot on. Uh, and I also thought it was really funny that he would stoop down to the level of submitting something to some low ranking enlisted person. Um, so that was really cool. Um, but some people contributed like things about, um, uh, you know, joke of the day. Um, somebody would, you know, like, uh, architecture about something they're passionate about. Um, I also did some articles about like how, you know, how black hole works or whatever, or nuclear bomb or something like that. And, uh, I remember when I wrote one about how nuclear bomb work, um, the, they had to, Get, they had to give me the, the the approval to be able to publish that on the ship uh, as if like state secrets are going to be given away or something. Um, but <laughs> one of those things I did, and I'm going to tie this in with the religious thing too, was like, I found myself like just kind of curious about what a cross section of the crew um, would, would think about something like uh, the speed of light. I said, well, that was one thing. So yeah. I asked like a hundred, yeah, uh -huh. I asked like 150 people, like what the speed of light was um, or if they knew yeah. what it was. And, got uh, you know i basically wanted to have a bar graph that would show um the proportion of people that got it right and some that got it wrong and i remember uh master chief I forgot what his name was um he the funniest yeah. answer of all uh he said mock two <laughs> so <laughs> I, I, it's like why not mock three then i mean or one you know but he said mock yeah. two very confidently yeah uh so but then uh one of the other questions i asked too was um uh, creation or evolution. Um, you know, and I, looking back, I can see it was because I was kind of dealing with these things myself, uh, or thinking about this a lot. And, uh, so I found myself also asking when someone say creation, I'd say, why? And they'd say, oh, I believe, you know, cause of God. And, uh, and like, why, why do you believe in God? And they'd say like, well, and that this is the thing that again, was like very fundamentally important for me. Uh, you know, the things they would say would be like, you know, well, my, cousin got shot um in a drive-by shooting you know as collateral like went through the house and hit him and like if it was like the doctor said that if it was like one inch over he would have been dead right so like thank god it missed his heart um but again like well he got shot i wouldn't have been better if he didn't get shot uh but it made me start to have to think about well what are my what's my rationale here and then also another one said um you know, they, my grandfather was given six months left to live and he had, it's been two years and he's still alive, you know? And, uh, so that's another that's rationale. And then one other scientific sort of attempt somebody gave me, um, and this isn't negative. This is Kipling. So I can mention his name Kipling. He gave me an interesting, uh, answer, which was, uh, he said, well, um, it's because, you know, like, I mean, the oxygen, in the atmosphere, if it was off by less than a percent, we wouldn't even be able to live. It's it's just too perfectly tuned for us, right? And uh, where some would argue that we evolved to the oxygen in the atmosphere, not the uh, not the other way around. Um, but so it really it really gave had me sort of like introspectively look at myself and my own rationale for things, and um, found you know that I my rash uh, you know I can make fun of uh, their rationales all I want, but then their three feet fingers pointed back at me. You know, I also probably have pretty crappy rationale for a lot of things. So I had to sort of reinvestigate that uh, internally. Um, so that was, uh, that was huge to me too. Unfortunately, the ship newspaper did not continue um, because I think, yeah, I think we went to war and it had to stop, but, um, but it was, it was such a, an interesting that experience is. for me. That war that, thing got yeah. in, in, in the way, in man. And messed yeah. it up. So. Yeah. Yeah. It was a fun little start, though. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I remember the, the speed of light question was the one that, would like, you know, <laughs> yeah. was coming to me the other day, earlier today yeah. when it was said uh, we were interviewing you. I'm like, man, 
some of the answers you got was were pretty wild. <laughs> yeah, you know, Ben, it yeah. would have been interesting if it had caught on and it maybe possibly spread throughout the fleet, and then the ships could trade newspapers and stuff. That, that would have been, been awesome. Cool, you know? Yeah, that would have been awesome. Yeah. yeah, like an STD kind of like running through. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> but I think there was some concerns about um, you know ship something. movements and other things that would be yeah right. Yeah. Uh, so it's got to be very banal sort of stuff. Um, unrelated but yeah i know it was just really really cool um to to uh to see all of us guys um that we all sort of had the same haircut ish uh wore the same uniforms ish um and we're just these little you know islands uh, of 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 stuff that you can't tell uh what you know the sort of expanse of, of people well, that we each are yeah. and i guess social media kind of messed that up too you know like Everybody's able to express themselves digitally instead of, you know. In a, well, now in we a, have emojis instead of therapists. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's okay. um, that that was just a very very important uh, sort of uh, foundational thing for me in the Navy. It's one of the things that I don't know if I would have had that experience uh, outside of the Navy. So for that, yeah. I'm thankful. I mean, like, who knows what would happen if you didn't join the military? I mean, being in that environment, like, you know, not having the opportunity to see other, you know, people and meet them and hear their experiences and stuff. Absolutely. You know, I do argue with a lot of people that the Navy or the military in general is the most, like, diverse place that you can be. Uh, you know, you're thrown with a bunch of different people, all different ages, you know, genders, religious yep. beliefs, cultures, everything like that. And you're basically forced to be that person's like lifeline, essentially, right? You know? Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. You you're you don't know this person really that much and they're from a completely different background, probably a different view than you. But you both have each other's back, really, when it comes down yeah. to it. Yeah. I, that's amazing. And I remember the one thing after getting out, I realized just how uh tight everyone was or cohesive. Where, you know, you always acknowledge a person when you're walking down the hallway, you say like, hey, um, but outside of the Navy, like, you know, people it just that was missing. Right. That was missing. I realized that was that was very unique to uh, to the Navy. The yeah. camaraderie, the camaraderie. camaraderie. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah. So, so um, very- being part of that, you know, religious, uh, you know, area and family. Um, what did your family think and how did they react when you told them you were joining the Navy? Well, uh, I, I sort of, um, <laughs> I'll use a phrase that I don't want to, you know, bite me here, but, uh, but yeah, I, I kind of stayed in the closet about it really. Cause I, I didn't tell my, tell my parents about it, uh, because I just was, what, a what a deeply insulting sort of thing, their own kid their own kid sort of rejecting uh, the very things they dedicated their lives to. That's a, that's a, just a fundamental, um, I don't know, undermining of, of the de- what they dedicated their lives to. So uh, I didn't really talk to them about it. And also part of me was um, maybe uh, um, narcissistically afraid that they too would then maybe lose their religion and have, nothing left and feel bad about their lives or something. I don't know. Uh, as if I would, you know, as if a few words from me would, would convince them of that, but I did not say anything, but my mom picked up on it. My mom had picked up something with, you know, my eyes were open. When we were praying, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, just, uh, uh, you know, views about things that were deviated from the standard sort of Christian thing. Uh, but so she could do, she could, you know, she sends the thumbs up, and my mom, she's the she's the type A. My dad's a type B. Sorry, um, she would sort of want to engage on that, uh, and she, you know, like any any story I tell her, she would say, um, "Oh, that reminds me of um, this parable." Blah blah blah. Right. So she'd always be pulling in the Bible. It's all like, uh, uh, and uh, you know, that to me, I don't know, that bothered me quite a bit. Uh, and it just is like, if she thinks that I'm an atheist or something like that, why doesn't she respect that? So I did eventually, she brought up that again, like she was trying to tie in some Bible verse or something, or some story from the Bible or some religiously connected story. So something that was 
that I was telling her. It, it's not, a, I was telling her about an experience that's just leave it at that. Just say, oh, that's really interesting or whatever. You don't have to bring up a, a similar thing where a Bible thing happened. So, but eventually I did. I remember it was like late one night and she was doing that again. And I said, mom, uh, like I'm atheist. Uh, I was like, boom, laid it out. It did result in her crying. Um, and sad, but you know, I had a great, <laughs> I had a great, you know, I had a great thing I could not worry about. I was like, mom, look, if you have faith in God, then God will bring me back. Right. You have to have faith. Right. So, I mean, nothing, nothing to worry about. Right. God will pull me back into the fold. Right. If, if you pray for me or something. Uh, and and that I was wanna... nice, dude. That was nice. <laughs> no, I said, like, well, mom, you know, I mean, I mean, but it's true. You like, challenge her faith at the life. same time as letting her boy go to the military. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, I mean, I, you know, that that's what she believes. So, I mean, I, you know, that's, I feel like that should bring her solace if, if in fact, uh, she thinks that God answers prayer. So then she doesn't have to worry about. Uh, so, but anyway, um, there there were a few other little logical things, and I certainly wouldn't want to belabor uh, the whole religious thing too much. But there were a few other little uh, things that just little thoughts that entered my head that made me really have to like consider it again. And like one was like, what if I was born into like a Jewish or Muslim house? Like I would be probably Muslim or Jewish. I just happened to be born into a Christian one, so like, what justification do I have to say that this is the right one, the other ones are wrong? And I could have been born in any of the other ones, just like a lot of other people are. Uh, so there's that. And also, like, um, I was thinking about, uh, you know, I remember in church, we pray for people um, in the hospital. They're in the hospital. Let's pray for them to help them get better because prayer, prayer works. Well, I was thinking about, like, what about the person who doesn't have any friends, right? And they don't have anybody praying for them. Like, it, so then it kind of becomes almost a popularity thing. Like if you have more friends, you're going to survive, you know, you're going to get through um, your, your condition better. And I think it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense, but it's uh, whatever. So th those things, uh, just, I don't know. That was all. <laughs> yeah. Was all I mean, you can argue that's how, how life is, right. You know, <laughs> like yeah, yeah. having a lot of friends, that's going to get you the cool stuff, you know? Um, so, you know, um, you, you're leaving the house. You're getting ready to go to boot camp. Um, what kind of like uh, preconceptions did you have about boot camp? Did you did you talk to anyone? Like yeah, like, yeah. Well, yes. Yeah, so my uh, my dad being the pastor and stuff. Like um, you know, I had a lot of exposure to people. I guess more than more than I wanted because I always had to like stay on my you know my p's and q's. I guess um, because my dad was pastor. I didn't want to you know. I need to get him in trouble or something by lighting fires or, you know, skinning cats or something. Not anymore. Anyway, uh, just joking. Never did that. Uh, but, uh, but uh, yeah, I, so I had some people who were in the military before and they were um, telling me that, you know, don't worry. It's all psychological. Um, boot camp is, you know, it's, they're just trying to get, they're trying to break you down and build you back up. Right. That's what I was told. And I'm sure you guys were kind of told something along those lines uh but so but I, I but it was it was to the point where like they're saying like it don't worry it's not a big deal but then i i kind of went in thinking well okay well, this is not a big deal i already know it's a sort of a psychological thing but we were uh going to chicago and getting on i remember like all these interesting characters in line with me uh we're standing outside in line and uh like purple hair mohawks uh, you know, spikes on their jackets. <laughs> so we get on the bus, and uh, and all of us are talking like amongst each other, like what's this going to be like? Um, here's what I heard, and blah blah. And then a guy gets on the on the uh, up on the front, and he says, "Everyone, shut your goddamn cock suckers!" And we're like, "Whoa! Like this is <laughs> that is what did I get myself into?" Uh, <laughs> Alice, my virgin oh, ears. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I felt like I might have only been the one with the virgin ears there, but I, I, but I was a virgin too because I, you know, I, my dad was a, you know, not no sex before marriage, all that kind of stuff. So it's like, <laughs> so all of this kind of came uh, crashing together. But 
Um, but like you were saying, Drew, like the the mixture of people, uh, the um, the interesting, like the you know cornucopia of different type of people from different places, different experiences, different cultures, um, different economic status, like every sort of way you. You, people are different. They're all there. Uh, and it was, uh, it was a real, like from Amish country <laughs> to this was, uh, was shocking difference. Uh, shocking in a good way. I mean, might've been tough at first. Right. But that sort of experience, I think makes all of us you know, a little more robust or something. Yeah, definitely. What, yeah. um, so what was, uh, what was the worst part for you in boot camp? Yeah. Uh, did anyone else cry? I mean, Pooping did anyone cry in boot camp? <laughs> no, no. Did uh, cry from cry from what? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's a great good good. That's the right answer. That's the right answer. Yeah, <laughs> me neither. So, uh, <laughs> well, I mean, I got teary eyed uh, like on the first phone call to my mother. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, like, did I cry because I had to like you know do push ups? No, oh, God, no. Okay. Here's the joy when those were. Bro, you, you said <laughs> RDC punched you in the solar plex. You said you said earlier you are you are a self admitted wimp. When you and get to so, the Navy ball camp, though, I like play that song. Oh yeah, that's also that's also kind of a teary moment. Yeah, I mean, but I mean, like oh, physical yeah. physical workouts, and I would be willing to bet that a guy like you got into trouble with RDCs more than once, and not for anything like yeah you cheated the system or you said something that you thought was funny and smart yeah, yeah and you're, you're spot on man yeah okay yeah yeah it's i the, can uh, see you asking for individual shower stalls <laughs> Shit. wouldn't it be more efficient if all the shower heads worked and were also warm <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no. i remember i remember, well okay yeah there the, were uh the the t- the question real quick is uh, the worst part was uh was when um oh yeah uh, i was on watch when everyone got to go call their parents or call their their oh, person geez. right and so yeah and so but i remember what an interesting like when people got back i you know completely different um polar opposites uh in sort of um their uh, you know their experience some were like just trying to hold back tears or uh because they didn't get a hold of their person the other person was like they was like they finally reconnected and they got to communicate everything they wanted to so all of that kind of thing um but you know you can see the hits and misses some missed it and some some got it uh but i ended up getting my chance as well um, they made, you know, they gave me a pass to go do it. Uh, and I called and I did not get a hold of my parents. And, uh, I remember calling any of the numbers that I could remember, uh, because at that, at that point we had to remember numbers, I think. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Or you had a little black book or something, but yeah, it was or you tattoo it like memory. Memento. Yeah. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> so, well, Adam's from Fresno. So, I mean, that's. <laughs> it's a thing. Yeah. <laughs> I know my so, be it. Yeah. Oh, here it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, but that was uh, probably the worst time. And that was, yes, that was, uh, I felt sad about that. Um, and my mom actually had like a very early portable, it was a bag phone. If uh, you guys remember, this like bag phone. It has a heat sink on it. It goes in your car. Mm. Um. Yeah. Because it, I guess, produces so much power, or it requires so much power, and probably produces so much radiation that even Spy One Delta would be like, "I'm jealous." <laughs> um, me, meanwhile, you're wondering why well, all the stuff in your cooler in the trunk is all hot, you know. But anyway, um, yeah. So like, uh, so she actually had always had her phone with her uh, for just this possibility but this one time she said she left it in the car and uh and so she felt terrible about that but that was uh but you know that that got passed and we ended up feeling like badasses and uh and crying uh, when we got hand- our hats from uh, recruit to navy is yeah. that the hat change Naval yeah yeah yeah, so that uh, that was that was the worst time and, and best. But I'll tell you what, I also had I have never laughed. I don't think so hard my entire life as a one circumstance in boot camp, 
and um and so uh so basically like um they <laughs> you remember the thing we had to get the inspections everyone's standing at the end of their rack uh, at attention and uh you know and they go like uh recruit what's your fourth general order right and you, you know you talk uh so there was this guy this little little guy who was like he looked ageless like, like he looked like he was like very wise and very ancient, <laughs> but you know, and his name on his bad or in his uh, thing was Israel. And I was like, well, that's a fucked up, like, like, I mean, it seems like that's a joke or something, <laughs> uh, but his name was Israel. And, and so like, uh, but he was like, he didn't speak much English and he, but he was like very, very good at folding clothes. And so everyone before inspections would bring over the t-shirts and he would, you know, you know, I think we're past the point of Irish penance, right? Uh, we had to get all the little things out and clip them. Um, and little Q, QC uh, tags, you had to get rid of those too. I remember weirdly, um, but he was so good. He would make this thing like perfectly flat and stuff. So everyone brought their stuff over to him. And though he couldn't speak very, very good American, uh, he was, he was very good at that. And he was known for that. Um, good American. <laughs> you can't either, yeah. apparently. Speak American. <laughs> I speak American. American, yeah. <laughs> well, so, um, yeah, I think it was pretty poor. But so, anyway, so we're going in the. <laughs> he, so, uh, you know, we're getting inspected. Everyone's standing up um, at attention. And, you know, the some master chief, I think it was like some higher up guy than normal, was going through. And he, you know, everyone's nervous. Uh, well, he was very nervous. I can say that. And so he was next to me. And, uh, so he uh so the, the guy goes ask me my thing whatever and then goes on to him and then so he's like crew what's your fifth general order and then shit i don't i don't know it i don't remember it but he's like oh master chief my 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 fifth general order is and he speaks really really quickly with a super thick accent i could not understand if he was even you know speaking english let alone which which general order he was speaking uh he was just so nervous right and so i could see the yeoman you know, with the clipboard, the the yes man who's always, you know, uh, next to the guy checking off who gets it and who doesn't. I could see the pressure building up. He wanted to laugh so hard. And and so the master chief was like, what the hell did you just say? You know, it's like, cause no one could understand him. And I could see the people behind, you know, on the opposite side, also like pressure building. <laughs> and so, he, and so uh, Israel says it again. No, no, I'm sorry. Not Israel. Islam. That was his name, Islam. Yeah, oh my yeah. Oh my and so God. he does it, it but work. even faster. <laughs> after he was admonished by this this master chief, he was extra nervous now. So he like it was even worse, even faster, and sounded like just one long syllable. Uh, and then so the yeoman had had it at this point and just busted out laughing in this silent, silent room with these like eighty five guys in there, and I also was. I was struggling to hold it in. And uh, after he busted out laughing, he put his clipboard down and just started doing push ups. <laughs> he just started doing push ups without being told to because he knew he had done something bad, right? And so I saw that and I busted out laughing. And I also just started doing push ups. <laughs> and it was this chain reaction where this scene was so hilarious that everyone's doing push ups. Of course, this mask she was there looking around just. A whole, basically, except for like two, you know, two ass kissers who were like, I'm not laughing, you know, still standing up. Uh, but everyone else is just doing push ups and laughing. It was this weird cacophony and he had not said a damn thing. And so he said, all right, everyone get up. And so he just went to the next person. <laughs> it was so <laughs> fucking funny. Oh my God. Uh, and also, um, when, when doing push ups after you get past the fear stage of your RDCs, um, we're doing push-ups and stuff, and they're they're walking around, they're you know they're yelling, they're like you know calling names, they're doing all this stuff, uh, and <laughs> and uh, so you know the one pacing up and down, you know, calling us pigs and and shit bags and whatever else they they call you, and uh, <laughs> and I remember like doing push-ups, and like every time he'd be he'd walk up, I'm at the end, he'd walk back, um, away from me, and I would make these absolutely horrific sounding grunts like <laughs> like that like doing push-ups which of course i'm sure a bunch of people are probably we could hear echoing around the city here uh but he's doing that and then he'd be like what the fuck he'd turn around and of course then everyone's quiet doing push-ups 
grunting, you know, calling everyone pigs. But I just do these horrible grunts as if I was doing it with broken arms or something. But he never found he never found me doing that. Uh, but that I got a lot of I got a lot out of that. So boot camp was at the first phase scary and uncomfortable and like what the fuck did I do with my life? And to uh, let's have fun with it, sort of thing. Nice. <clears throat> it's a good way to attack that. Um, so you you're done with boot camp. You got your navy hat. You already cried. You know. Um, yeah. We all do. You know. I'm sure. Um, right for show for show whether only. Or not yeah. we want to admit it or not. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Were your uh, family? Did they come down to see you graduate? Yes. Um, yes. In fact. Uh, yeah. Um, so uh, actually, during boot camp, one of the weird uh, special things that happened was that um, one of my relatives, my uh, one of my like uh, you know second remove something, it was, was a captain uh, on at RTC, and uh, so he was the uh, chaplain. Chaplain. Um, my family, religious, right? So. Um, but he, he no, knew I was there. And so, um, I was there over Christmas or leading up to Christmas. And so they, um, he sent a request to get me out of boot camp and go hang out at his house at a captain's house, uh, while everyone else is kind of doing their thing. And so, um, I was like, holy shit, this is awesome. Like, wow. Like, uh, this should raise my status. Well, uh. So I remember just going there um, and just like watching a football game with, you know, with the, uh, you know, him in the room and um, my feet, I remember my feet just absolutely reeked so bad. And uh, it was very embarrassing, but there's no way I'm going to put my freaking boots back on in their nice house. <laughs> but um, so they ended up dropping me back off afterwards and the RDC is freaking let me have it. Uh, they had me doing push ups and uh, you know, <laughs> they had me doing push-ups like on the one end by the bathroom uh where basically they just but they couldn't see me so he's sitting at his desk i'm he's like having to do a thousand push-ups or something like that and so uh so my dog tags i realized like he can't see me so i'm just gonna like you know keep grunting like uh, uh, and then hit my <laughs> dog tags on the ground like this and i i think i did like 400 push-ups that way uh so he never <laughs> <laughs> he didn't find out about it. He was not. <laughs> he was not. Uh, this guy. Well, first of all, my one RDC's name was BM1 Gilligan, and I was thinking, like, what a like, what a weird place for a joke, right? Because that's who he introduced when he got off the the, the, the plane or whatever. He got off at the. Where he's like, I'm BM1 Gilligan. I'm like, what, are we doing a theme thing? What is this? <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm Professor. So, yeah, where's Skipper at? <laughs> well, well, you know that he's gotten shit for that name, right? And so oh, he's yeah. like. It's kind of like oh. short man syndrome, but the, you know, but with a name, he was like the most serious, you know, guy, no one's going to call me Gilly, you know, like joke about my name. Um, <laughs> I will make them do a thousand pushups. But, uh, the other guy, I forgot what his name was, but he was hilarious because like when he would get really flustered and pissed off or whatever, or whatever fake pissed off is like, he would do spoonerisms like with his words where you reverse words or you reverse yeah, yeah. the letters on the words. Um, and so, yeah, he would, he would like, you know, he's screaming in your face and then, <laughs> and then he totally fucked something up. Like, you know, he'll say something like, uh, why eyeball me you, um, instead of why are you eyeballing me or something like he would, And then, you know, like I learned uh, one of the best tricks I learned was to bite my cheek or my tongue really hard when I was about to laugh. And then it just make the pain just so much that it, that it, that it would erase the smile. But I could see everyone behind, you know, behind him standing up you know, silently laughing their asses off back there. And like, and I have to keep a fucking straight face. It sucks. Hey, Ben. Uh, hey, Ben. Yeah. How, yeah. You know, speaking of like Gilligan and you're like, this messing me. How disappointed were you? Like you go into boot camp thinking these dudes are badasses, And then you go to the fleet and then you realize that it was FC2 ding dong is just picking the orders. <laughs> yeah. he's where he's at. You think these dudes are the most badass dudes in the Navy. And then you're like, oh no, he was just, <laughs> <Just picking orders>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i mean it was a stark contrast from the uh sort of like you want you know your perception and and sort of the perception as you go into boot camp and all the kids at high school and stuff you know your friends and stuff like wow i go in the navy it's like yeah it's, it's basically like the steals right it's basically like the steals. <laughs> basically yeah uh yeah but you yeah. get on your ship and you're like 
dear God, this guy looks like, you know, my freaking uncle, like, uh, you know, who basically just sits on his ass all day, uh, doing paperwork. I mean, it's like, not at all like the, the sort of just testosterone infused, like badassery that we were kind of, I use, uh, that, ex- I use that description all the time, dude. Like some guy that looks like my fucking uncle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> when I'm just like describing like the laziest person I can think of, I'm my uncle. Yeah. I don't even know him. <laughs> yeah, I know. I don't. I don't think there's anything wrong with my uncles, but like, just like, <laughs> I don't know. Uncontroversial. I'm sure we all have a, an uncle somewhere that we're relative is like that. But yeah, it's just like lazy assholes on the ship. It's like no different than walking into like, you know, like a. Quickie Mart somewhere. The people sitting behind the desk. It's like not yeah. at all what I was expecting. Yeah, but that yeah, awesome. I mean, it, boot camp. I was just thinking about it yesterday, completely unrelated to this. But I was thinking, like, you know, I have like weirdly fond memories of boot camp, even though I hated it so much. And by reading my letter, like my little diary or whatever, mm-hmm. I was thinking, like, oh my god, like poor baby, you know, poor baby, you, you know, only got six hours of sleep last night. Oh God, what a wimp. Uh, thank God. Uh, thank God. I'm a jock now. Uh, <laughs> but you know, but it's just like vastly different. And I remember looking at back at it now and it was like, if I had the chance to just like go through it again, would I? And I think, I think I would, I think it would. There was something fun. Remember like walking around, marching around and like, you could judge the other, how long the other people had been there by the length of their hair. Uh, <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, you, you get your hair shaved once and then, you know, it just grows and you say like, oh, they're, they're more seniors. Oh, they're probably going to graduate. Look at that. Look at that hair, right? Um, yeah, that was all so weird and interesting. Wrapped up in like the nomenclatures, like using ladders instead of stairs, the scuttlebutt, like, uh, you know make a hole like all all this stuff is uh okay. was so peculiar okay yeah yeah i don't know it's cool i would do it again i think except for the gas chamber probably <laughs> yeah cool well um yep you're done with boot camp and you are now on to your next uh your next orders next school actually yeah. to, uh to josh that's my responsibility. <clears throat> like a school. Oh God. So I, I know you said you were like in the advanced electronic computer field. So I'm assuming you went to a school just right across the street from yes. boot camp. I think all, almost all of us did. Didn't we? Oh, yes, kind of go all did. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. And NTC. I guess at that, at that point we had to make a decision if we were going to be an electronic technician or a fire. Yeah. Control, right. Yes. And we all know, we all know very confidently which one the badass one is. <laughs> and we all have different answers on that, I'm sure. <laughs> so what, what, what made you choose fire controlman? Uh, well, um, oh, because of the Tomahawk school, I think. I don't know. I mean, there was like, at that point, I, I didn't want to, you know, I, I was thrust into this category that I'd never even considered. And uh, I know in my case, maybe in your case, too, we were in a room and they were like, do you want to blow shit up or do you want to fix electronics? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> and so we were like, yes, blow but, you know, the, shit up. The counter, the counterpoint to that, because I, of course I do too. Right. And I think all guys uh, do, but the counterpoint to that was thinking like, but is that marketable right. outside of the Navy? <laughs> right, right, yeah. Right, yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I got an so, ET but I, friend, and I thought about that. Still to this day, is this, up. Yeah, <laughs> I got an ET friend, and he's still to this day. He that's all he does is fix electronics and stuff. I'm just like, damn, I wish I, <laughs> I wish I had learned that shit. Yeah, why doesn't anybody want to know how? Like, want me to fix their Tomahawk system? Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, so, and also, uh, if I could just get reference too, because I'm, I think, pretty long winded on these. Uh, how many questions do we have? So I can uh, sort of tailor my responses mm-hmm. keep it short um we could swing into um some just like general like fun like hey what's mm-hmm. your favorite port visit and questions if you want uh, oh oh yeah 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 let's, okay let's do that let's do that in fact well, so, i have one that involves the josh obviously we're t- top of your class because you got to be tomahawk orders right correct in a school <laughs> no i mean okay i'll say yes 
Uh, but no, uh, it wasn't that. <laughs> no one, no one wanted. It. I mean, I, I wasn't at the bottom, but uh, those days were behind me. But yeah, I, I, I didn't really have to compete too much. So that was that was <clears throat> those were hot orders when I was in. Everybody wanted to be a tomahawk tech, you know. Yeah. Well, you know, Mac Mac also got to be a tomahawk guy. So I mean, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Okay, so you do you go you go to C school in uh Damn yep, Nick. Uh, damn Nick. Yep, uh Yep, uh many drunken nights is right first experience right. with uh Mad Dog twenty twenty was there and first and last experience. And Damn um, Nick is close to what, Virginia Beach, Virginia, all that yep. stuff right Oh there. yeah. Oh yeah, I mean right I mean from You might you know, as well from, just be Yeah, you're you're in the thick of it down there because I mean, even at the school, it's like you're in a hotel. You're in a hotel. Literally, you look out a window. There's a beach right there. And you're right next to, like, one of the hottest, like, tourist spots on the East Coast, like Virginia Beach. Uh, that was a quite a shift from, uh, from, from NTC uh, and shortly before that boot camp. I mean, even NTC, sea school, that was still kind of like, you know, you're sleeping in a bunk and stuff, right? Uh, it's, right. it's not. It's, it's, a, it's a small step from boot camp. But this so was like now enough. Yeah, you graduate C school even with the alcohol, yes, issue, and get stationed <laughs> on the Donald Cook. Well, that was after. Oh yeah, yeah I think that's probably why they sent me to Donald Cook. Actually, um, <laughs> yeah, that, we got another. Uh, we got another code blue. Let's uh, let's send 20, him to the uh, 20, 20, 2024 Ben Hall would have been caught with fucking seltzers, alcoholic seltzers. <laughs> <laughs> Hell no, I, dude. You're Chuck Norris. <laughs> okay no uh but yeah it's uh i mean the, the stark difference was, was pretty amazing uh you know we had freaking room service there like they would <laughs> clean our rooms for us and stuff like it was it was yeah. awesome so but Anyways. yeah can't relax too much apparently and buy alcohol when you're under 21 <laughs> yeah well <laughs> but uh, yeah go ahead uh, I can see that you're walking in the mean streets of Seattle after dark, so I don't want to keep you up too much longer. So I think we're just going to hit you with a couple of fun questions, Ben. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, first of all, visit, I want to. I want. I like to start off with um, what was your fa- least favorite and favorite meal aboard the ship? Oh, least favorite. You know, I really can't complain too much about the food. The food is, I think, pretty good. Um. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't recall. I remember having a few bad experiences uh, in the uh, galley or the uh, yeah galley. Is that the eating room? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I where I was uh, a sailor. He's a former sailor guy. Uh, Dr- one of Drew's compatriots there. Um, I forgot what her name was. Um, uh, Ramirez. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I remember- it was our on our uh, <laughs> division. Yeah. Yeah. Um, she was in her dress whites uh, about to go out and watch, <laughs> and I was shaking up the ketchup bottle, and I just oh, remember here say, "What the fuck?" And uh, I was like, "Oh shit!" Like, yeah, that nah, was a boo boo. Uh, I guess uh, the lid was loose or something. I don't know, but that was uh, that was uh, uh, not particularly fun. And also, I remember arm wrestling on there all the time with people, and. <laughs> uh, and I remember Bo Jackson came on to the ship one day, was sitting there and, uh, you know, signing autographs or whatever. And somebody's like, because I always arm wrestle people. Uh, so it's like, Oh, you know, ask him to arm wrestle. And I was like, okay. So I, you know, I went out and said, uh, hi, um, do you want to arm wrestle? <laughs> and he's like, yeah. you know, of course that look of like, are you fucking kidding me? Uh, but, um, he, you know, I said, no, seriously, you want to arm wrestle? I mean, his arms were like bigger than my legs. Uh, but you know, um, so he said he pulls out his wallet and he takes out a hundred dollar bill and he throws it down. He's like, you're gonna have to put up or shut up. And so and like, like, you showed him your pay stub. <laughs> I know I, I dug in my pockets. I'd like, I don't know. <laughs> I had some change and a couple of dollars and then somebody else like gave me some you dollars. Hit a, you hit a Bobby Hart. We, uh, we know. <laughs> of course. Everyone wanted, I mean, how often do you get to see someone's arm broken right in front of you? I mean, it's for, you know, for only a couple of dollars. <laughs> so yeah, some people gave money so I could give it to them. So I threw down like $5 and 75 cents. <laughs> and, uh, and it basically said like, you know, 
unless you're scared or something. I basically wanted to imply that, like, if he didn't want arm wrestle, it was because, uh, you know, it was intimidating or something. And he wouldn't do it. Uh, and I think he cited nervously about maybe, uh, you know, lawsuit or something like that. But uh, but he was scared. I could tell. Yeah. So, yeah, that was the other experience of the mess. Mess hall? Mess deck? Mess deck? Mess deck. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I remember Holland. I remember, um, you know, when you start realizing you're so immersed in the Navy and your brain is so much like in the Navy. <laughs> I remember we were going uh, drive through at McDonald's. And um, so she's reading back the order. She, you know, we're driving through. The, reading back the order. So that's the number two with a large Coke. And he said, that's affirmative. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God. What have we turned into? <laughs> this is true. Uh, but yeah. Oh, um, if we're going on a port visit, um, you know, I wouldn't want to preempt anybody. But if we're going to port, port visits, I do want to. Uh, I have a story that involves Joshua Cole. <laughs> he's an educator by the way so yeah and so if his students well, okay. some okay. people will find them oh no 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 it's, this is nothing this is nothing about that other time no 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 this is a, <laughs> um yeah so i remember uh so we pulled in some port oh yeah mallorca mallorca this is after oh, like yeah. our one port after the war Right after we're heading back, and so everyone has been uh, basically away from sh- uh, from shore for I think seventy eight days or something like that. Well, yeah, two months or over two months or something. Yeah, and seventy, it was the seventieth day or whatever, something. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And had a lot of money, right? All of those paychecks not being spent. So we had a lot of money. We it was our last port visit. We just fucking went to war. Like everything was pointing towards there are going to be some major you know, international diplomatic issues going on when we get there. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> the captain JJ, uh, very wisely said, this is a three buddy port visit, right? So you have to have three people connected together. So your all asses are all on the line. If anybody screws up, I think it's pretty smart. Um, so, so I, I think Josh and I were both were tired because we had been like on watch the night before or on duty or something like that. But we we were, had slept late, and uh, and so we had to find a third person. And so we're like, damn it, everyone's gone. Of course, like you know, of course they're gone. Um, this is like a beautiful place in paradise, and uh, and then we found. Hold on. So, Oh, why? So loud. So loud. Man. Oh, wow. I mean, do you see the flame shooting out? I mean, oh, that's terrible. I hear it every day, no matter where I am. Anyway, um, so, uh, so, you know, Josh, are like, oh, we, you know, we can't, this, like, this paradise awaits us, and we, have, we can't get out of here. Have it. And there was Brain Setter sitting by his lonesome. Weirdly, no one wanted to go on a port visit, right? Uh, or no one wanted to, um, everyone found different buddies, I guess. Uh, well, so jo- I think Josh and I kind of looked at each other like, well, should we? Like, yeah, I guess if we want to go to paradise, we're going to have to. Yep. So we did. So of course he jumped up. He was ready. He had all the stuff there, right? All dressed up, nowhere to go. Um, and so he, he had his, his blue jeans with his military belt and, yeah. and, his, uh, and his Bates, Bates shoes, his Bates his, boots. <laughs> His uh, 50% of the time Australian accent. Uh, uh, yes. Was the other he was in that still era. <laughs> yeah. I remember he had an Australian accent for like his first month. He was there and then yeah. it was just like gone, right? Yeah. Um, he was really like, like, dude, where are you from? And he was like, all over really, you know, get around. <laughs> I remember I said like, are you, like are, you, are you from Australia? He's like, what do you mean, mate? I'm like, well, your accent. He's like, I don't, what, do you, what do you mean, mate? I'm like, oh God, this guy's weird. Anyway, um, was, but, but a wonderful yeah. person. So anyway, so we go out and we begrudgingly, but you know, I had, we, 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 we got, you know, him as a buddy. And so, um, you know, Josh and I, you know, two single handsome strapped, steadily friendly, great sense of humor and very sensitive people are out there trying to meet some girls. And, uh, <laughs> and, but then, you know, but we had, but we had brain center there too, who would, you know, um, in Mallorca, one of the things that made that kind of noteworthy to me was that you're walking down like the strip, um, and there are these absolutely phenomenally beautiful women 
everywhere that will come up and say like, Hey, you know, we'll give you two free shots and a free hat if you come in here. And, uh, and so, you know, it's a, it's a marketing technique, which is very effective for a bunch of Navy guys who've been out to sea for two months. Um, but I remember like, so we're like, you know, this is amazing. This is amazing. We're finally out there and it was awesome. I mean, even just like to have a beer, like oh, everything's so perfect. But you know, so the girl, this girl comes up, she's like, you know, come on in here. We'll give you two free shots and stuff. And then brain setter just looks at her and says like, what time do you get off work? I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, this is the way this night's going to go. Uh, so, um, so, so Josh and I, we decided like, you know, no one's getting laid if, uh, you know, if we, if we're in this configuration, uh, three body system here is not going to work out. So, um, <laughs> so I, so we decided that we were going to, um, leave brain setter. I don't even know if that's his actual, it was brain, brain setter, brain setter. I don't know, but brain setter. Yeah. Brain setter. <laughs> um, but he, uh, you know, we, you know, he seemed like he, you know, he was sitting at the bar and, uh, so we, we kind of wanted to like, like leave him, you know, let him enjoy himself, you know, without us bothering him. Right. <laughs> so, um, I remember like there was these two girls, uh, sitting over at the other end of the bar and, uh, I, I bought two beers and I gave them to those girls. I said, they're from that guy. Right. Um, so, you know, like, like get him some conversation, um, kind of distract him a little bit. And so, um, so they didn't go talk to him. Uh, I see that pretty, pretty obviously we're not interested in talking to him. So I went and got the beer, I took the beers back, uh, and gave it to two other girls. But, um, so we said, like, Hey, J- Josh and I are going to go, you know, do something. Um, yeah, we'll be back in like you know, 20 minutes. We, you know, we couldn't be, we couldn't say, you know, here's our cell phone number. And we, nobody really had that. Um, so, uh, so we did, we went over to another place and finally, like we're, you know, the, the ball and chain or the, the thing is gone. And, uh, so I remember we got a picture with, uh, there was just like, it was like, you know, a, a dream almost like if you could make the most amazing scenario it was this, you know, it was Josh and I with like, you know, we got a picture with like 20 beautiful girls, like all around us. We're wearing hats that we got for free. We got our free shots there. Um, and it was, it was awesome. It was like one of those snapshots. I don't have that picture. And if you do, Josh, I would really, you know, I kind of want to verify this is not a figment of my imagination, but, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I have three laptops that I've forgot the password to all of my Navy pictures are on there. So I will get those and I'll share them with you guys at some point. But, um, so we decided like, ah, you know, it's been like an hour. We should go check on brain setter. So we go back. I'm like, you know, like, what if he did something stupid? The guy's like a complete wild card. You don't know what he's going to do. <laughs> so um, we go back, and there's a crowd of people watching some spectacle. And we're like, what? <laughs> what happened? Well, there he is. There's one of the, the, the video game machines that, like, you can karate chop, and it'll tell you, like, how, you know, what kung fu master you are or something, um, how strong you are. And <laughs> uh, so he was there. He was doing this like um, pose. It was like the uh, you know the the, the breathing uh, thing. The karate kid, yeah, 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 yeah. And people are like lined up, and he's like ten feet away from this this machine, and everyone's like kind of like lined up on it. And then he opens his eyes, and he goes, Rah! he starts running towards the machine, and then flips on something before he gets to the machine, and cracks his elbow on a piece of broken glass or something like that. Um, <laughs> so, so, uh, he, oh, did, well, he had done it once before and he said he wanted to do it again. And this is when he got really serious about it, but then slipped and then, you know, cut his elbow on something, which was absolutely like, you know, terrible to laugh at, but it was so hilarious. Um, so we didn't get in trouble or anything like that, but I remember him, like, I think the next day, um, explaining why he's got a big bandage around. Him. He said something about a knife fight that he was in <laughs> something like that. <laughs> I don't know. That was so hilarious. Uh, I don't know, Josh, do you remember any of that at all? I, I remember that. I do remember yeah. that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that guy was, I mean, it's like, you know, I was talking about it earlier. Like when you, you talk to people and realize like how much of a human they are and how interested they, you know, are in different things and how complex and stuff like that, you know, behind the veil, 
he was the same weird guy. Uh, interesting oh, yeah. character. Quirky, I'll say. I'll say Obvious. His, the, the rules that, his, that Adam laid out earlier. His recruiter uh, definitely lied to him for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think, you know, and then here's the, here's the flashback to that point. It's like, okay, you're going to have to pretend you're Australian. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Always a good move when you first check yeah. into a new command. But only for two months. Only for two months. Okay, that's... that's the... <laughs> the, people just take the opportunity to reinvent themselves, and I fucking... I respect that. <laughs> I guess so. I mean, it's just like... <laughs> In in a way, yeah, I think also well, Jeffrey Dahmer invented himself too, didn't he? Like, well, to like to know, like you, like you can't, you know, you're a piece of shit. And to the first thing you tell a woman yeah. is like, "What time do you get off of work?" That I wish, yeah, I yeah, that kind of fucking <laughs> that baldy. I, yeah, I remember he would. He had a pair of. They would bust him because he had a pair of white socks on. He took a pair. Of, he took a sharpie and colored his white sho- <laughs> socks black with a sharpie. Man, isn't that what the Navy needs? Innovative, like you know, yeah, thinking outside I mean, the socks, people. <laughs> thinking outside the socks. No, you can't just do that. Get out of here. I want, here. I want to start more, wrapping more up. highbrow than that. <laughs> <laughs> I want to. I want to stop wrapping up. And for sake of the podcast, but we don't have to stop the conversation. But does anybody have any last minute like fun questions for Ben? Uh, yeah, I do. Um, how cool was it when the movie you got served came out for you personally? <laughs> you know, I to be honest had not seen that, but I that does not mean it didn't change my life. Uh, <laughs> I totally forgot about that until you brought that up. <laughs> I totally forgot about it. Man, Mac would have been great here. Well, we made a card. We laminated a card. Like we'd, uh, you know, we'd, uh, we'd give some sweet, some sweet, like smack talk. And then, like, boom, you just got served. And we like, you know, we get to the point where um, we actually didn't even have to say you got served. We just hand them a card and, uh, you know, they got served. Uh, yes, that was, I should watch that just for historical reasons. Do you? <laughs> That just sorry. That just reminded me of the stupid like when that Starbucks commercial came out in the. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Yeah, that's right. It was like so. It's like um, the guy is in bed. He wakes up when a band goes. um, John uh, tonight or what was that? No, it was the it was Survivor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. John, John, John. He's brushing his teeth and they're like singing like brushing your teeth and a good big day like and like so they go and everything he's doing is walking to work and then there's somebody's pulling a cart with the band playing still playing like walking to work like (laughs) and yeah that's so funny we did incorporate that into way too many things. I mean, to have to that point, luxury. To the point um, where, like, if somebody called your name, you would yeah. have to answer. Yes. You... <laughs> yes. Um, I remember, because, like, follow-up question. Do you remember the digits for the Power Rangers theme song on the... Uh, <laughs> Ivix? On the Ivix phone? Ah. Oh, oh no! Five, five, three, wow, five. what was it like? Five, five, three, five, four, five. <laughs> oh, oh, I do. <laughs> Does that work on no normal oh, phones too? <laughs> da, 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 da. Does that work on normal phones? Or is that just I that phone? Don't, I don't think so. <laughs> that is uh, and then, wow. Like uh, after um, I see, it, it's like stop calling us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we need it's to change like our number. Was, yeah, the people with the phone number eight eight seven eight three. No, no, uh, mm-hmm. was it eight eight seven eight five, six three, seven five three zero nine? Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> that's the one. I'm sure that was like blacklisted on the phone book. <laughs> um, <laughs> it sounds like that Power Rangers theme song. <laughs> yeah, that shit was fucking hilarious, and it, it yeah. stuck with me for well, obviously this long. I'm pretty sure those were the digits. Yeah. Um, five five two five three five <laughs> five five three five four five. A oh, four or five. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. That's pretty sure. man. That is a memory. That's fucking accurate as fuck. Yeah. Because yeah. I think that I think that the odd number or the the, the the numbers one, two, and three each made different tones, but as you went down, they all made the same. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, one with was a slight the same difference. As four. Yeah. 
But when oh. you dialed it five five three five four five, it made it seem like you were like really doing a tune. <laughs> <laughs> like you were really playing an instrument. You were just playing a fucking Ivex phone that only had oh, three tones crazy. anyway. Look, babe, I can do it without even looking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, Man. Geez, and um, do you think you spent more time like calculating, you know, super duper equations for tomahawk? launches and stuff or more time thinking about how you could spray a certain chief in the face like a bottle of water if you open the door <laughs> oh oh well yeah well <laughs> uh no i mean we didn't actually do any calculations no one would trust us to do them uh you know check the pub or uh, have the thing do it but there there was a circumstance uh where it wasn't achieved it was my my uh the ensign in charge of the the, the officer oh, that yeah. you know we're all we're, we're out to sea for a long time we're out to sea for a long time things get lonely you know i mean it's hard to find privacy right i mean that's a that's a struggle we all had well you know we, you know you, you you choose your time and place right as, as best you can well i found his time and place unfortunately uh <laughs> and like in very in a very you know very obvious very obvious way uh, where I opened it was late at night you know I mean probably thinking no one's no one's coming in here and well I did and uh, and I just remember a scared look and a running back away from the door and I was like oh I'm gonna I'm gonna step out well it happened twice this isn't what I was it happened about twice. At all. <laughs> it happened. Oh, oh. Well, well. I mean, I almost got sprayed in the face. If that's what you're talking about, I thought. I thought that you had at one point in time, oh like, developed some sort of Rube Goldberg fucking uh, with a door opened up and it sprayed the water bottle in Chief Morgan's oh. eyes. Oh, oh. Okay, I, I vaguely remember. That. That's so much more innocent than what I was talking about. No, yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot more innocent. It's actually. Uh. <laughs> oh, that, that 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 took a dark Not turn. Borderline there, didn't it? Oh. sexual assault, or I don't know what you even call it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> you almost got you almost got jizzed on by, by <laughs> what I'm I know, assuming I, is easily I, traceable to anybody listening to this show if they know who you are, what when you got on the ship, and <laughs> roughly when you got and off, then when and you got and then when you got off on the ship, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So. <laughs> got off on. <laughs> Well, so uh, I mean, that that story in itself is peculiar and awkward for sure. But it happened twice, and this is the weird part. I mean, that's weird, obviously, but the evidence was left. The only paper on the table was the plan of the day, and his expression of how much he enjoyed it sitting there on the table. Only paper it left it there. <laughs> I have no idea what well, that was. Such a bizarre moment in my life. I, oh my God. I, so he left it on the table one time. I caught him twice. Uh, but uh, <laughs> what was it <laughs> leaving on the table? It's like this. Like you know, this is calling this is me. This is yeah. This is me. This is. I mean, why does my my dog marks the territory by peeing? Isn't that easier? I mean, <laughs> this is my this is my division. We well, heard about the like, phantom shitters, so mine was a phantom yeah. farmer. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't much of a phantom. <laughs> he saw him leave his ectoplasm. <laughs> I, 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 I just want to like, provide some context. Is um, oh boy, is um, we Ben and I we worked in a top secret work center. Yeah, yeah. They needed a cipher lock to get inside. That was. You know, as loud as a fucking rickety dungeon to enter into yeah. the doors and open yeah. the door. So you have plenty of time to yeah. wrap up. I I think you can actually hear if it's if it's quiet and only your heavy breathing. I think you can actually hear, <laughs> you can hear the, the clicking, the keys okay. being pressed. Yeah, yeah. Clicking, and if you're that nervous, just put a boot on it. <laughs> On the, on the handle or something, you know? Yeah. And that way the yeah. guy that walks in is like, wait. Or a jock strap just, or something. You can always change yeah. the combo, couldn't you? Couldn't y'all change the combo from the inside? Like, well, like, that's a, that's <laughs> that, that is very uh, tie, difficult. Tie yeah. a neckerchief around the handle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. 
get that do not like, disturb sign up. <laughs> well, no, actually, actually, he needed he needed the neckerchief for the for this part. The yeah, <laughs> the yeah. auto auto erotic. Okay, we had to plan yeah. today. <laughs> Tell me what GQ is. He was hoping somebody would open that door and start hanging him. <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, the thing was like, I mean, also because it was a top secret space, like, I mean, of all places, maybe you felt like you'd be the most yeah. secure there, right? Uh, but no, no. There's like eight people that can get on board here that I can, t- I can definitely jerk off in peace. No, nope. yeah. there you go. <laughs> I mean, didn't they get their own showers or something? I'm like, I mean, come on, it's whatever. It's not. Yeah, but uh, like they, so, share, yeah. they share one other stateroom, and one of them is always on watch, you know? Very cool, uh, though, man. You got to see a man of power, like, in his, like, weakest form, dude. <laughs> that's that's right. I, that's, uh, but you know what? I, I would never have thought that it would have actually only emboldened him to do it again. Uh, yeah. Maybe that was after the part where I made the, the Rube Goldberg thing to spray somebody in the face, and maybe that was his, like, his sort of very intellectual response mm. to me. Uh, I, see, how, see how you like it. Uh. Hey guys, I'm gonna start wrapping it up. Yeah, oh, I think it's a great idea. You would have done that. Yeah. Um, let's get into some beer reviews. I'll kick it off again. Um, once again, I was ha- I'm having from the Black Raven Brewing Company a collab with uh, California's Firestone Walker Brewing Company. The uh, Shark Ripper IPA, a lot of citrus notes, and um, it's right in my wheelhouse of IPAs and how I like them. I like them juicy, I like them citrusy. Um, this one's actually pretty low 6.0 ABV. <laughs> but they're pint size, they're pint size. Absolutely fabulous beer, like I said, IPA, citrusy, um, juicy, everything I love about an IPA is in this can, and I give it a solid 4.0. Uh, Andy, why don't you remind everybody what you're having? 6.0. Give us a... Sure, I went uh, extra pale with uh, sweet water, extra pale ale 420, uh, you know, from Sweetwater Brewing in uh, either Fort Collins, Colorado, or Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, went with the uh, just shy of 20 ounces of beer here. It's 5.7 ABV. Um, and as it's fairly well documented on this show, uh, I was never much of a fan of like Ram's Piss. So <laughs> wow, this is about my favorite I- closest IPA type thing. Um, you know, uh, I gave it a two seven five, I guess. You know, it's, <laughs> it's, it's over half for what it is, but you know, um, you know, I do it for for the fam and uh, for the you pod. know, I was very excited to be here with uh, you guys. You know, pod fam, I'm very excited to hey, be. Hey, well, here. thanks for thanks for uh, sacrificing uh, your taste buds here. Yeah, for my you know my IPA request. Yeah. So. Uh, real quick, Andy, did you pack the DC cat specifically for the podcast? Because I know you're on a trip. You're no, I pretty much almost always I wear this. Okay, like okay, that's cool. That's ninety cool. percent of the time. Uh, I, I oddly enough, you know, that's badass, uh, Drew. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah um. Andy is very mad about his IPA, let me just say. So, <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> I appreciate uh, sticking it out for us too, man. Um, but I I had the Florida Avenue uh, Brewing Company. Um, this is called Luminescence. It is a double dry hopped tropical hazy India pale ale. Mm. I uh, love hazy IPAs. Um, and then this was like ramped up with, I don't even know. It's really juicy, um, citrusy, you know, not not in the way of like added juice or anything, but it's just very um, quenching, if you will. Uh, this is right up my alley for beers. Um, I would take this to the beach. Uh, I could take this to parties and I think, you know, people would be pretty stoked about it. 
Um, it's a Florida beer too, which of course is even extra points in my book. Um, it is actually from Wesley Chapel, Florida. And I have no idea where that is, but Hey, awesome. What's the ABB on it? Cause I know you it always is. go. Yeah. Okay. I was just getting to that one. It is 7% ABV. Oh, it's kind of low. You went low. You. <laughs> I did. I went a little lower. I did go a little lower. Um, but I think any higher. But you like, got a PRT tomorrow? It would be like too. Oh. <laughs> it would be too high. If it was like, it wouldn't be, it would be too much for the beach, I think, if it was any higher. Um, right. I'm going to give this a 4.5, man. I think it's uh, pretty solid. Um, I would buy this again, and I can't wait to drink the rest of these. Nice. Joe. Joe. All righty. I said I was drinking the Hazy Way IPA from Martin City in Martin City, Missouri. <clears throat> it is 6%. And uh, it, 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 it's, it's pretty good, I guess. It's, uh, I get the juicy, the juicy talk, the, the tropical talk. And I get that, you know, in this beer quite a bit. Um, Oof. You're not a big IPA guy, right, Joe? I am definitely not. Okay. Um, I, I think a lot of IPAs give. Um, well, uh, Josh's fiance one time said it at when I was visiting him, and said it gives a garbage mouth, and uh, what she would I guess would describe as like the bottom of a garbage bag drippings into your mouth, <laughs> and uh, and I was like, you know, I do get, I understand what you're saying after you've had like four five six ipas you kind of get that like dry disgusting mouth i want to i don't want to mean i don't mean to interrupt this isn't fireside chat so i can <laughs> but i used to feel that way about ipas but they're so much better now especially the hazies um they're fucking I, I think there's i think there's a, i think i have a personal limit to where uh, like you know like all right how much india and how much paler can we possibly get in this beer how much more bitter yeah, you know, like, like at some point we have to just say, like, you know, I'm glad that we got him from the semen recruit that just graduated boot camp, and we brewed him through the armpits of his first T-shirt. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. You know, and 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 now we're we're bottling this. You know, like we have to stop somewhere. And uh, uh, with that being said, this doesn't really give me a lot of all that terrible stuff. <laughs> uh, so you know. It's it's too early in the year for me to really 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 enjoy this, so I'll give it a six, uh, with the possibility of a. Wait, are we on a one to five scale? Five. Yeah. You're, on, you're on semen on film. Rating. Okay. Yeah. You're right. You're right. You're right. All right. I give it a. It's off the scale. I give it a two point five, <laughs> with the possibility of a three point two five. So it's on a relative scale. So among IPAs, it's a three point two five. But in general, oh, no. uh, in July, in July, I'd give it. I'd give it something better. The summer, the summer. Yeah, I just feel that it's, it, it, it's, it's just okay. Like a two point five. It's a good beer. It's better than some than a lot of other IPAs. But I'm still just kind of like you know, like not really into the whole IPA thing anyway. It's been yeah. it's been kind of like beat over the head with a hammer. Yeah. But that's the way you feel if you have too many of them, too. <laughs> well, they're fucking everywhere. It's hard. It's, you know, like, yeah. it's very hard to uh, dodge an IPA unless, of course, you want to go like, I don't know, seltzer. And then there's like gluten free. And then, like, like, dude, just, I just. And then, and then your friend says, I thought you'd like women. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, dude. <laughs> Joshua. All right, I'm ready. What do you? What, what, what do we got? What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Uh, I'm doing the evil gangster. Evil uh, gangster. Yeah, man. Imperial Indian Pale Ale. I'll tell you one thing I like about IPAs, and I like the history behind the IPAs. Is that what you teach? <laughs> no, I don't. He, I don't he, I'm, a, I'm a librarian, actually. The seventh so. graders. <laughs> I don't teach history, but I do enjoy the history behind behind the Indian Pale Ales. Anyways, I encourage if you don't know the history, look it up. But uh, as far as this one, uh, excellent. 
I really enjoyed it. Oh, I can't find much about it, really. Maybe it's a fake. Maybe it's... Um, I have a question while you're looking. Indian Indian Pale Ale, what Indian are we talking about here? <laughs> the real ones? The, the, the real the, ones or the, the ones over in India? The ones in India. Because they would okay, so right. they would ship beer to India, right? And they would shove it with hops as a natural anti anti uh, biotic anti anti fungus. Oh, interesting. Yeah, and that would keep the beer. And so supposedly that style became they they, they liked the style. So it's an Indian pale ale. They would just shove it. I guess the hops itself has a natural antifungal, antibacterial property to it. And hops, like, is that the thing that that germinates? Uh, like, where they have the it's at the a certain flower of growth? Yeah, that's the flower of the hop plant. <laughs> I guess you know, you know what I'm talking uh, about. Yeah, so it's not. It's like nature's defense against uh, fungus, I guess, and so it's exploiting that. It seems like. Yeah, maybe. So huh, that's cool. Joshua, what are you rating your beer? I am rating it. I'm going to agree with untapped <laughs> and rate it at 3.8. Woo! Whoa, that is just a bit high. Do you want to round up to four or round down to 3.75? Oh, let's do 3.75. Okay. It's a good beer. It really is. It's drinkable. They hide the alcohol well. Being nine percent alcohol, it doesn't take. It, it doesn't even have an aftertaste of booze. It's really they do a really good job. Um, it's brewed and here I in can't Texas. Feel my leg. <laughs> so uh, that's cool. It's got a cool can. Check it out, man. Is there any space related beer down there from uh, from SpaceX? Oh yeah, there's there's a whole <laughs> shuttle. There's a whole. Sh- uh, it's called, sh- I think, it's Shuttle Door or Shuttle Hatch or something like that. It's all these That's cool. beers and stuff. Yeah, there's a whole thing down here. There's a big. That's a there. Uh, there's a big brewing club down here called the Masternots. Am I saying that right? <laughs> Masternots, yeah, from the mash of the beer, you know. So. Yeah, oh, that's, that's cool. You know, NASA's just right down here, and Johnson Space Center's just <sighs> right down the road, like two hours away. What about Boca Chica? Where's that? Where relative to where you are? That's in Brownsville, right? That's probably like shit. That's probably like eight hours away. Damn, Texas is big. Texas dude, is a big dude. ass state, dude. I could drive from my from where I'm at to like El Paso it would take me like sixteen hours. Wow, and you're not talking about bike, right? You, I mean, this car. <laughs> no, yeah, <laughs> driving the speed limit. Yeah, hey, I'm gonna I drove cut this from off. I'm gonna cut this off. Oh. Okay, Uh-oh. Benjamin, do you want to? Do you have a rating for us? Uh yeah. Uh, so uh, I'm uh, did not do a video for battery purposes, but um, so I uh, will admit uh, initially that I do not have a very good taste buds. I feel like I'm <clears throat> colorblind with taste. But um, so to that end, oh boy, um, <laughs> it, this is uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, it's called Ride the Spiral Double IPA. Um, eight percent. Um, it is, I think, very good. But uh, you know, again, um, I don't, I can't taste everything. So, uh, I when I was a kid, I put uh, honey in the microwave for like a minute and then squirted it on my tongue, thinking that it would be taste good. But it just burned the skin off my tongue. And I think ever since then, uh, yeah, the, the nuance is uh, nuance is kind of disappeared. So. Uh, I don't know. It's not so funny. That's a sad story. It's a tragic. I mean, like it's like losing a sense. I don't know why that's so funny, but uh, that's a terrible, Your a other terrible thing to laugh at. We're heightened, me. though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh Your man. Sense of humor. Yeah. yeah let's go with that. Let's go. Sure. Yeah. 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 Yes. <laughs> yeah. That, that did. It. <laughs> but also at the same time, it's like well, it's like having COVID all the time now. Uh, but. <laughs> and also, uh, you know, broccoli doesn't taste that bad. It just doesn't taste at all, really. So, but uh, with regards to beers, I am under the assumption, based on the little things I can detect, that it's good. So I will give it a one out of one uh, on my scale. But I'll say, yeah, four, four out of five. I guess. <laughs> okay. So Coors. Yeah. 
<laughs> it was really awesome reconnecting with you guys. Yeah, man. Yeah. It's good um, to see you. Thanks again. Yeah, I've got a great idea for for like a spinoff episode. So, what's that? Whatever you want, man. You and Josh, man. I just want to like just I'll just I'll just throw out like random <clears throat> random things I've seen <laughs> on the internet, and you guys can just like discuss them. You know, like and like, it could range from anywhere between you know like new beers or like Rihanna's boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll listen. Hey, what do you I think? Beyonce is a new uh, country song. You know, I mean, like, I, I, I just what? Like, Whoa! I don't know. Like, I yeah, there's a a lot of stuff that that I think that uh, you and Josh would like to like to talk about just for like maybe like an hour and a half or whatever. Ninety minutes. You guys can talk about the size of fucking <laughs> yeah. Texas. <laughs> I mean, it is disgustingly huge. Like the map doesn't know justice when you think about like how long it takes to get from like the southern border of Texas to like Canada. Don't don't let Joe pick on you because the last podcast I had to edit like 15 minutes of Joe just naming cities in Delaware for some reason. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck. Was Whoa! Going on. I didn't even think Delaware had that many cities. <laughs> Joe knew them all apparently. <laughs> he just didn't Damn, know Joe. where they were geographically. Geo ge- geographically. Well, uh, I, I actually I have a question. To see if um just and I don't want to, to, we don't have to do a whole conversation about it. But one thing I would be interested in talking about at some point would be uh like ChatGPT AI stuff. Have you yeah, guys messed around yeah, with chat? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't That's trust. Pretty freaking. I don't like. Very interesting, man. Yeah. Right. Either it's like uh it's like the savior for humanity or it is the end of humanity. One of the two. Uh, it's got to be one of the can, two, yeah. <laughs> it's got to be one of the two. Yeah. Right. Little quarter, right? Well, we can't do best out of three on it, though, whoever it lands on. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I use it every day. Amazing. But maybe next time. Yeah. Well, cool. my mom just texted me, hey. and she says, are we still talking in 20 minutes? So, Can I tell you, uh, also, tell you a joke? Can I yeah. tell you a joke? <laughs> What's the most expensive streaming service? Is it YouTube now? No, it's what, college. What it? <laughs> streaming service? Yeah. I don't get it. it streaming service? I don't get it. All, a lot of college is online now. I don't know if you know that. Oh, oh, yeah. interesting. Oh. Andy, Andy, uh. you're good at doing all the plugs. Can you do all the plugs? And Yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> follow, follow us on all right. all that was like a dad Go do uh, Average G.I. Joe podcast uh, playlist. Uh, ben will have to get your contributions to that. Uh, the Spotify playlist is always growing and, and uh, expanding its horizons with every interview we do. So it's a great diverse collection of music from sailors that have been on the show. Uh, follow us on the social media. Go check out Seaman on Film, of course. Um, we're on Instagram, Twitter, all those kind of good things. You can find us. Go order the merch. Yeah, where can we get these shirts at, man? Where can we get the where where can we get the shirts? I'll throw yeah. the link in the, link in the description. <laughs> in the description. I will probably pin it to like the top of our Facebook page or something or whatever. You should flash it on the screen. You should flash it on the screen. Oh, uh, but yeah. I I'd love to get it. I won't wear it around uh, kids or anything, but I I would love to get one. <laughs> you can wear it around kids, man. It's fine. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, unless you get a belly shirt that's also a tank top. <laughs> how, how many times I, people might be a different story though, on your <laughs> unicycle? <laughs> how many how many times do you find yourself explaining? No, it's spelled S E A M E. Look, it says it right here. S E A M E. I love it. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> what else you got? Uh, uh, what plugs in it or what? Oh, uh, Drew, you want to? Give us uh, the mental health. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Take care of yourselves mentally and physically. Um, you know, if you're uh, if you're needing some help, reach out. You know, there are plenty of places around you. Lots of VA stuff. You know, if you're a veteran, um, lots of organizations. You know, yeah. um, we're all here to help. I'm here to help you. If you want to talk, you know, I talk to people daily at my job. Um, I'm not a counselor, but I'll listen. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Don't want to get too far into that, but. You know, um, I didn't want to say one thing. I think that we should all do something for ourselves. You know, we're, I think we end up doing a lot of things for other people 
you know, take time out for yourself, do something for yourself. You know, um, Andy does, um, you know, the, um, uh, yeah. shit, I'm blanking here for a second. Um, what's that stuff called, Andy? The the improv, doing that. Improv, yeah, thing. The the guitar, guitar for veterans. Improv. And, Sorry. Yeah. And, yeah, uh, yeah. especially yeah, the guitars yeah. for veteran stuff, you know, yeah. um, <clears throat> do something for yourself, man. Take care of yourself mentally. Super important. Awesome. Oh, with that, through that, uh, say good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night.